The number one cause of acne in adults is not eating oily foods. It's not eating a bunch of fats. It's not eating cheese. It's the real inability of your body to process something that all of us, unfortunately, consume too much of. So in order to understand what's impacting our acne and our skin to being oily and things like that, we have to understand the basics of collagen really quick. Okay, so collagen gives our skin integrity, it gives our skin elasticity, but it also does help us out when it comes down to our skin staying moist and not getting too dry. It can help out with oil production at the right time. Collagen is very, very critical, but there's something in collagen that's called elastin. It's a component of collagen. And when our body cannot process this one particular nutrient, what ends up happening is this elastin degrades and it breaks down. And if that happens, well, you don't only run the risk of some more acne and things like that, you also run the risk of more wrinkles and whatnot. So with this, we have to take a look at a study that was published in Advances in Dermatology and Allergy. It was very interesting. So what this study did is it took a look at subjects that had acne, 243 people with acne and 156 control subjects. And they monitored them for a while and they found that the subjects that had higher levels of insulin had more acne. The lower the insulin, the less acne. So the 156 subjects that did not have acne had pretty stable insulin levels. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that there's of course a correlation between insulin and acne, but what is actually going on? Well, insulin levels being high don't tell us everything. You have to back more data out. When insulin levels are high, it means that, well, the body isn't doing a good job of soaking up glucose. That means you have high glucose. So insulin resistant people typically have high levels of blood glucose too. This high level of glucose will do something to proteins in the body. It will glycate them and create what are called advanced glycation end products. So what happens with advanced glycation end products is they can make proteins weak. And remember how I mentioned that our skin, our collagen is a protein, collagen protein. So if you start breaking down those proteins within collagen, you're left with weaker, more decrepit skin that is less able to defend itself, but also just flat out becomes wrinkly and crusty anyway. So I have some solutions on this in particular, and there's more to it. So I'm gonna start with step one, is you need to take care of the gut, okay? We forget that there's a correlation between the gut and our brain, but also between the gut and our ability to process carbohydrates. There are increasing bodies of evidence that are suggesting that a lot of insulin resistant issues do start in the gut. And it has to do with something I talk about probably ad nauseum on this channel, and that is going to be short chain fatty acids. So by increasing fiber intake, by increasing things like psyllium, by increasing things like flax, by increasing things like chia, by increasing things like glucoman and fiber, okay, like shiitake noodles, not only are we potentially losing weight by adding those things in, we're also controlling blood sugar by adding those things in, but we're doing something even better. We are increasing the amount of butyrate producing bacteria. Okay, bacteria in our gut produce different compounds. Good bacteria produce butyrate, okay, and butyrate is almost like a beacon of communication. When we have more butyrate, it signals to the cells to ultimately become more glucose tolerant, is a good way to put it, so they can use glucose better. So by controlling what we eat as far as fiber is concerned with our gut, we not only control our blood glucose, but we also help our cells utilize that glucose better, potentially reducing some of these instances of insulin resistance. So when you start looking at acne, by increasing fiber, sometimes it improves that, but that's not where it stops. There's a lot more to this. Additionally, you can add probiotics into the mix. So I usually like to add uh, things like kimchi, which technically isn't probiotic, it's more prebiotic, even though it's fermented. Okay, but also kefir. Okay, good quality raw kefir if possible. Okay, dairy probiotics are probably the best form of food probiotics you can get. I also popped a link down below for a probiotic supplement I recommend. It's called Seed. Literally, is probably the best one out there that you can get. Most of them are really cruddy. They have a cool technology that I really like. They have a capsule inside of a capsule, which kind of helps ensure the proper delivery and proper potential colonization. So you do this along with adding some fiber in. It could be huge as far as what it can do to your microbiome. So big fan of those guys. So I popped a link down below that also saves you 15% off if you wanna check them out. 
And if you're interested, they also do a bunch of microbiome research. They do a bunch of work as far as the gut brain axis and mental health and how our overall gut microbiome is impacting how we feel and our cravings and all of this. So again, that link is down below to save 15% off. Literally the only probiotic I would recommend for adults right now. So that link's down below. So the other piece of the equation, if we directly can impact that collagen, that can be big too. Okay, so you might be thinking, okay, I just take a collagen supplement. Certainly collagen supplements can help, okay? I mean, there are some studies I've seen that demonstrate that, yeah, when you add collagen into the mix, it does potentially help the skin. I don't know if it'll help acne though, okay? That's the thing, it might help the wrinkle side of thing. The other piece that we have to remember is that vitamin C helps form pro-collagen. It helps the whole synthesis of all of this. So if we have enough vitamin C coming in, then we can help support the collagen formation because remember, it's the collagen breakdown that we're dealing with as an issue. So that's one thing you can do. But then we have to address the other side. So these advanced glycation end products that form when so much sugar is present because our insulin levels are constantly high because they're not working because we're insulin resistant, well, this affects the antioxidants that are in our skin. Remember, our skin is an organ, okay? So it has its own antioxidant capabilities. Our skin has antioxidants too, but advanced glycation end products can render those much more useless and degrade them. So with that, we are left being much more weak when it comes down to what could affect us. Sun exposure, toxins, things like that. So how do we impact and improve this? Step one, of course, correct the insulin resistance. Do whatever you can there. Periodic fasting is probably the biggest drop that you could do. That's the biggest hammer you could drop because you're just abstaining from food. Your body has no choice but to get more insulin sensitive. Okay, the other side is try taking astaxanthin. Okay, astaxanthin is an antioxidant that you can get in capsule form or you can get it from eating things like sockeye salmon, things like that. Also in krill oil. Astaxanthin is the reddish pigment, but what that does, like people that are out in the sun a lot, they take it as sort of an internal sunscreen. So it helps restore some of the antioxidants within the skin at a different level to help protect you from the elements, protect you from sun. So I would recommend anyone take this. I take astaxanthin anyway, but especially if you're insulin resistant, I think it can help you out with that. So definitely something to consider there. Maybe anywhere from six to 12 milligrams, probably not necessary to go upwards of that. Now, as far as the fasting is concerned, I would recommend doing that just a couple days per week for anywhere from 14 to 20 hours, two days per week. Some foods that you can implement into your life as well that can help you out with this. Mediterranean style foods that improve insulin sensitivity. People think insulin resistance is a death wish. It's not at all. Like it's something that is correctable because it hasn't gone into its full blown disease form. And even then people make headway all the time. But implementing monounsaturated fats things like macadamia nuts, things like avocados, things like olive oil. These are incredible insulin sensitizers. They help restore that sensitivity to insulin. So your body can sort of like hopefully rekindle everything, okay? Now, additionally, bringing more protein into the diet. This is one that's talked about all the time. There's some interesting research surrounding lima beans right now too. Lima beans seem to have proteins that have antioxidant capabilities that improve insulin resistance as well. So however you can adopt these Mediterranean principles, not to mention going for 10 minute walks here and there just to help the muscles soak up glucose, the simple bottom line is whatever you can do, berberine, cinnamon, things like that, to bring glucose down, you will probably notice an improvement in your skin. And people notice this even with low carb diets because their glucose levels remain a little bit higher because they have what's called peripheral insulin resistance. So maybe thinking I'm low carb and I still deal with this. Well, because you still have more glucose that's available. So you may need to operate with some cognizance for developing more insulin sensitivity. And the little things that I mentioned here can certainly help you no matter what diet category. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.